Every life starts with the fusion of an egg and a sperm. But sometimes, unexpected extraordinary happens. A shared beginning has been occurred. Welcome to Twin Fertilizations. Before the first breath, before the first cry, a story of life begins. For most of us, it's a solitary journey. But for some, this odyssey starts with a unique and profound connection. When we talk about twins, we're actually talking about two very different biological narratives that happen to unfold at the same time, in the same place. These stories begin at the very instant of fertilization. At the first days of the story, hundreds of thousands of sperms swim determinately through the vagina to the fallopian tubes. Only one sperm can successfully penetrate the outer layer of the egg. If a single egg is fertilized by a single sperm, forming one zygote. This zygote contains all the genetic information for one individual. The zygote begins to divide rapidly. It's during these very early stages that the splitting for identical twins occurs. The timing of this split is crucial. If the zygote splits very early, within the first three days after fertilization, the two resulting embryos will implant separately in the uterus. Each twin will develop its own placenta and its own amniotic sac. It's called dichorionic diamniotic twins. This is the least common type of identical twinning, around 20% of all twins. Despite having separate placentas and sacs, these twins are still genetically identical. If the splitting occurs between days 4 and 8, after the chorionic sac has developed but before the amnion has formed, the twins will share a single placenta but have separate amniotic sacs. It's called monochorionic diamniotic twins. This is the most common type of identical twinning accounting for about 75% of all twins. In these pregnancies, a thin membrane separates the two fetuses within the shared chorionic sac. If the division of the zygote happens even later, between days 8 and 13, after both the chorion and amnion have developed, the twins will share both a single placenta and a single amniotic sac. This is called monochorionic monoamniotic twins. It's considered the rarest and riskiest type of identical twins, about 1 to 2% of all twins. As there's a higher chance of umbilical cord entanglement, which can compromise blood flow to one or both babies. If the splitting is incomplete or occurs after day 13, the embryos may not fully separate, leading to conjoined twins but this is extremely rare. Identical twins share nearly the exact same genetic material because they originated from a single zygote. Any differences that emerge are due to environmental factors or very rare genetic mutations that occur after the split. Due to sharing the same genetic information, identical twins are almost always the same sex. They often look remarkably alike, especially in early life, though subtle differences in features, fingerprints, and personalities develop over time due to unique environmental influences both in and out of the womb. But what about the non-identical twins? Non-identical twins, also known as fraternal twins or dizygotic twins, 
develop in a fundamentally different way from identical twins. While identical twins arise from a single fertilized egg that splits, fraternal twins result from two entirely separate fertilization events. In a typical menstrual cycle, a woman's ovaries release one egg. However, in the case of fraternal twins, the woman's ovaries release two separate eggs during the same ovulation cycle. This phenomenon is called hyperovulation. Each of these two eggs is fertilized by a different sperm. This means that two distinct zygotes are formed. Each of the two fertilized eggs then implants separately into the wall of the uterus. From this point forward, each embryo develops independently. Each twin develops its own placenta and amniotic sac. That's why it's called dichorionic diamniotic twins. Sometimes the two placentas can fuse together if they implant very close to each other, but they remain genetically distinct and functionally separate in terms of their blood supply. Unlike identical twins, fraternal twins are no more genetically alike than any other siblings born at different times. They share, on average, about 50% of their genes, just like regular brothers or sisters. Because they originate from two separate eggs fertilized by two different sperms, fraternal twins can be of the same sex, two boys or two girls, or different sexes, one boy and one girl. This is the easiest way to definitively know if twins are fraternal without a DNA test. Just like any other siblings, fraternal twins may look very similar, or they may look quite different from each other resembling other family members. The tendency of hyperovulation to release multiple eggs during ovulation can be inherited. This is why fraternal twinning often runs in families, typically on the mother's side. All twin pregnancies are considered higher risk than singleton pregnancies and require more frequent monitoring by healthcare providers. Twins are often born prematurely before age of 37 weeks, with an average gestation for twins being around 36 weeks. One or both babies may not grow as expected due to limited space and resources. Due to position, size, or complications, C-sections are more common in twin deliveries. Understanding the specific type of twin pregnancy chorionicity and amnionicity, is crucial for managing the pregnancy and anticipating potential complications. Ultrasounds are vital for determining these classifications early in gestation. As twins gestation is just a miracle. After completing our twins journey. Tell us in the comments which type of twinning you have in your belly. If you like the 3D medical animations, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.